<laughs> was good, yeah. It is time to start Hero Guides back up again. And as y'all have voted for it, we're going to start off with Hollow. So for Hollow, we're going to do the usual as before. We're going to talk about the skills, when you should stop, if you should ever stop upgrading her skills, and then also take a peek at Awakenings. After that, go over gearing and then general use cases for the hero as well as potential uh, tips and tricks. So yeah, here we go. Off we go. Number one single target here as standard as it gets hollow uses her attack so attack based healing so based on her attack and the targets max hp she heals up to one ally uh, basically one ally in range with an increase of up to 10 percent in healing multiplayer if you level up the skill her second skill energetic bliss when light of bliss is activated recovers 1.4 percent rage for all allies in the range which is a usual 0.6 percent rage so an increase of over two times the rage region if you fully upgrade the skill and now the question is what is light of bliss light of bliss is obviously her ultimate so her ultimate states when triggered increases the hero's healing multiplier by 45 percent for 20 seconds and the hero can heal one more target important to note here healing multiplier isn't exactly healing effect healing multiplier is an inert stat of a hero that is rather cryptic at least for the moment until my bucket maybe someday releases his uh, teased healing calculator and yeah only only thing you gotta know for the moment is you activate her healing she can heal one more target and she heals stronger than before that's all you need to know for the moment now let's talk about skills honestly it's it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward you want to max out the ultimate because number one she uh, obviously increases her healing multiplier, so she heals more. And number two is level five, which is a skill cost reduction. And because the ultimate is what triggers the passive, you want to trigger the ultimate as much as possible to take the full advantage of the passive right here that you should also max. Because the difference between 0.6% rage per second and 1.4% rage per second comes out to either 12% rage region or 28%. So 28% rage is what a hollow restores through the duration of a 20 second ultimate. Now when it comes to the basic attack, if you should be lucky enough and you're staffed on resources, you can keep the basic attack level one. But at the end of the day, honestly, you should probably completely max her out. And that's about as far as you need to go skill wise. Now, awakenings. Her A1 is pretty straightforward. Each healing restores 1% of the rage cap. So if she heals something, rest she restores 1% rage. That awakening is quite nice. And if you have one source stone lying around, do make sure to invest it into her. You get an instant return. Her A2 isn't as important. The increased attack doesn't really affect her unless we're talking gear A2 or maybe healer codex. Awakening 3 again same as with the ultimate it is pretty important to reduce the rage cap so you can trigger it more often and pretty much get into spamming it Then awaken 4 obviously increases her healing Through increasing her attack and then awakening 5 each cast of light of bliss or ultimate increases the efficiency of accumulating rage by 15% Going up all the way to 75% it is still not completely clear how exactly that works. The only thing you need to know is her A5 is really good. You want it and it makes her get rage faster. So honestly, Hollow is one of the best destinations for your Soulstone and is probably someone you should definitely get to max out skills, six stars, six promoted, five awakened. So now that we've talked about the skills, what to max, what to awaken and all that good stuff, we're going to go straight into the build so a hollow build is rather straightforward there's there's two versions at least for the moment there's the traditional hollow version and then there's the gate boss version we're going to start with the traditional hollow now and then we're going to get into the gate boss uh, in the into the gate boss hollow after so for the traditional hollow it is it is not specifically really about where you have what but what stats you're going to get out at the end so stats you want to aim for we're not really going to talk about what kind of pieces we have but so attack your attack needs to be around 200 percent attack at least you want at least twice the attack so plus 4800 attack attack speed wise you want at minimum 100 and preferably something around the 250 mark because that is the point 
where you still get the most out of attack speed. So something along the lines of 200, 225, 250, even 275 is totally fine. And then the last that we need to talk about, or second to last, is healing effect. For healing effect, you can kind of imagine it as crit damage with 100% crit chance. It basically just makes your character heal more. And what you want to aim for here, again, is around 100. So 200% attack, around 200 attack speed, 100 healing effect. And then Rage Region is just a bonus for the traditional holo. It, it just allows her to cycle her ultimate faster through healing her allies. And then we have obviously Rage Region Auto, which is a stat you can't actually upgrade. Now that brings us to Artifacts. And artifact wise, there's a couple of choices for Hollow. Choice number one is going to be most likely also the best one for your traditional Hollow. It's just a straight up attack increase as well as an increase for Rage Region, which helps her with cycling. Then, as another choice, you have Euphoric Orb, which is increasing the attack speed of all heroes in range by 30 every 60 seconds, which is mostly going to fit into Guild Boss, if anything. And then out of, out of all the healing artifacts, when it just comes to straight up healing, this one is going to be the best when it comes down to artifacts, and that is increasing the healing effect, single target, by 4% for every one ally unit present in range. So it stacks from 4% all the way to 8 to 12 to 16% increased healing effect, and that's what in ST stands for, that's its single target, so don't put it on your Elowin. And, and all those other artifacts are pretty much fine. If you know that your hero obviously can't stay at max HP, you don't really want to touch this one. And yeah, this one obviously might as well work, especially when heroes are getting closer to dying. Through all the artifacts we've talked about, one prevalent choice is also going to be Keen Wisdom. Keen Wisdom is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you don't have anything else, it's just going to increase the healing of your hollow. And yeah, you can slap a keen wisdom on her with a good conscience, with a clear conscience, but you might as well, if you have it, slap on a generic band, which increases her attack speed as well as her attack when her ultimate is triggered. And because you're cycling ultimates all the time, generic band is a very good option. And then you also have the slight niche use of Tumultuous Horn, but that's only rather for specific purposes and there's no clear, oh, you should use it over this and that. Yeah. Obviously, to, uh, to all the mythic artifacts we've talked about, there's also a counterpart that is um, that is going to be not the mythic, but then the legendary version. So, for example, we have Bright Root Ring here, which increases healing effect by 30. And then we have Nephrite Folio, which increases healing effect by 15. So it's kind of the same thing, but just a weaker effect. All right. And that's, that's pretty much hollow when it comes to your standard normal hollow. And now we're going to talk about guild boss hollow. So for guild boss hollow, we're going to do a pretty fast uh, trick over here if I can actually manage it. There we go. Quick swap. All right, guild boss hollow. The builds couldn't be any more different. So what is guild boss hollow all about? Stat-wise, it is rather interesting. Your attack ranges all the way from 50 to 100% attack. That's about as far as you need to go. Then the important part is attack speed. Your attack speed needs to be very, very high. Preferably somewhere around the 350, maybe even higher. And then even healing effect isn't as important. If you can get something close to 100, that's perfectly fine. That is really of lesser importance. It's all about attack speed. Because what happens in gate boss is, is that Hollow heals a target and she heals it to full anyway. And what is the problem with most Hollows when it comes to gate boss is number one, they, they heal a target and then something else dies because they take too long. And number two, you're not actually ulting enough, so you're not really making use of the additional one healing target, which keeps your Hollow healing a single target instead of two potentially. And that is which gets resolved through this ridiculously high accumulation of rage region. So as you can see, we have a rage region of 112%. And that is all in the spirit of allowing Hollow to ultimate as fast as possible. Even though there isn't a 
really big difference between 50% rage and 112% because rage really falls off after a certain amount. It is still at least somewhat noticeable. And then we can we can go over the stats a bit. Obviously on your weapon you want some attack speed, healing effect or attack threat if you can get it. But the most important part is rage region. And now you might be wondering, oh why haven't I actually seen rage region of any, on any of my gear pieces? The answer to that is pretty simple. Rage region only appears, besides obviously having equipped the only piece you have, only appears on ancient gear. So if you're looking for left side rage region gear, it is only going to be found on ancient ones. And here obviously it's straightforward. You're going to, for your chest piece, it's pretty simple. You're just going to pick attack percent and healing effect because attack speed again is ancient exclusive to a chest piece, the same way crit damage is ancient exclusive to a weapon. So here for the best normal chest piece you can get, it's legit going to be attack bonus and healing effect. And that's about as far as you need to go. Then here we have healing effect as the main set, some attack speed and some attack percent as well as rage region. It's mainly about having either attack percent or healing effect in the main set and then having a subset of attack speed and rage region. That's all what this piece is about. The middle piece is pretty straightforward. You want attack speed in the main set, rage region in the subset, and then healing effect and attack percent are just going to be a bonus. And the last piece, it is finally time for you to pull out your incredibly gifted and busted rage region main set pieces. As you can see, rage region main set with preferably attack speed and then as much of healing effect and attack speed as you can manage, which then already concludes our hollow build. Now, this hollow is for gate boss, so there's two choices. Number one, golden scarab, because you want to increase her uh, attack and increase the rage region even more, even though starting way already from 50 becomes way less effective to go for rage region. So golden scarab isn't that perfect of a choice. Or if you have it and if you can actually craft it, euphoric orb. What euphoric orb does, especially in gate boss, is giving a 30 attack speed increase to all heroes in range for 60 seconds, lasting for 40 seconds at max level, so there's only a 20 second downtime. And interestingly enough, this 30 attack speed for certain heroes might make the difference between the attack interval going down another 0.1 second, which will then obviously make you end up with more damage, especially considering the fact that also Pantheon buffs get added on top of that and all that. So Euphoric Orb is probably really still the best damage boosting artifact we have at the moment and should be your premier choice when it comes to your Hollow and Gate Boss build. So yeah, that concludes probably all the Hollow builds that are. So we have the Standard build, we have the Gate Boss build or Rage Region Spam build and yeah, then next we're going to go over all the various use cases I will find for Hollow. All right, now that we've talked about Hollow's skill boss build, we might as well put it into action. And for that one, I'm not going to go too in depth because that's for a later date, but I'm going to show you the basic concept for everyone that is unfamiliar with it. The basic concept of using a rage region comp containing Hollow. So the main ingredients are Hollow, Laurel, Volca, and then if you really want to take it the furthest possible, either a layer or a potential Elowin as a friend assist. And with that, let's get straight into the guild boss. All right, so we're obviously, it's just because it's already so deep ingrained in my bones, I guess. It's almost a rhythm with the way I place units. So I just placed on my units for the moment. And if, if you're taking a close look at the placement, you can see that everything is pretty much revolving around two, two very specific squares. Let's, let's take this camera angle for the moment. So it's, it's the standard placement for Dolores, which obviously empowers everyone in range. And then right over here is the tile where you want your Laura to be. Which is also what makes clear why are we even using Laurel? Why aren't we using Elowin? It is exactly this use case. The fact that Hollow's range allows her to be placed right over here and then have everyone in her range to heal them as well as give them a rage bonus, which just wouldn't be possible because Elowin would need to take up this spot over here mm. to 
even be able to reach all of the other units and hear them as sufficiently. And that just, it really allows to make make this whole strategy work better and as well as not just positioning issues we we know how uh, how Elowin works Elowin restores one percent rage per second at a max skill level and that's always going to stay the same and you can't influence it but a hollow a hollow restores rage as long as she's in her ultimate so if you combine a hollow with the laurel you're going to increase hollows uptime and through increasing hollows uptime you're going to increase the rage region even further so that's pretty much the general plan you're going you're going to just be placing down your units obviously uh, activating those ultimates first and now something that some of y'all still might not know as soon as the hero activates their ultimate and their circle of the ultimate turns from blue to orange which might take a bit more time depending on the legendary we're talking about for example Satrum takes ages that is the point when you can overcap their rage so you can already start recharging their rage for the next usage of their ultimate so that is exactly what we're going to do here we're going to trigger twin fiend zillow 2 and then activate hollow and as soon and then also activate the loris and as soon as everyone is active, we want active, we can take out Laurel. And then, just for the sake of it, put on Leia to show it to the complete extreme. That would be the point where you instantly activate Leia if you have a maxed out ultimate as well as a maxed out tumultuous horn. But yeah, so we are activating all our ultimates. And while all those ultimates are ongoing, we are already charging them up again. And you will see it as soon as Silas' ulti is ready here. As you can see, in comparison to starting on 0% rage, Silas is already on 90%. He's already back to 90% rage. The same, then we just activate him again. Activate Hollow again, who's already ready again. And now look at Dolores. Dolores is instantly ready. And we all know that most heroes, if not all heroes in this game, are in their strongest state when they're using their ultimate. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're giving our heroes the highest ultimate uptime possible. And then there's there's two different ways to use Leia. If your Leia has a maxed out skill, max or tumultuous on, you can keep her on the field, use her ult a second time, and then take her out. Or you could take out instantly the moment you place her in and use her ultimate. So yeah, we're just going to keep her in. Activate all our ultimates. Again, Zillitu for example is also instantly ready. So here we're going to activate layer again. Just let that go through. But yeah, as you can see, if you keep in layer twice, at least for this one, we do have a bit of a downtime, which is time in which we can't place Laurel on the field. So you might even want to consider taking her out earlier. But what it also does allow us is the ability to actually use our units ultimates before we place in Laura to take them out because again if we don't use the ultimate we can't overcharge so yeah that is about as far as we're going to get into the rage region strategy which is obviously also kind of everything explained already but uh yeah i hope that helped you out and if you haven't yet mastered it be sure to take a peek at rage region strats because that is exactly the way everyone should be tackling gate boss at least with what we know for the moment all right, now let's talk about arena. So there's only one arena where you could consider using hollow and that is single target arena. And then single target arena, what you want to do through the use of hollow is keep everyone from your team alive to rather like, instead of failing at the sixth or seventh wave, actually sustaining that one and relying on the enemy losing against that wave, which puts her, as you can see, in Apex Overlord in the 19th, spot when it comes to most used units for single target arena and we can check overlord and see if she's actually in there and as you can see she isn't actually present in overlord nor is she actually present in uh in platinum and that is because you have you have to play the rather specific way but uh, problem number one 
we don't have uh, anti-air DPS, so I can't showcase it. And problem number two, I wouldn't be able to uh, to completely successfully showcase it, at least on this account, because we don't have a Valeria here. But another, enough of that, you can consider using her in arena, but only really in single target arena. Now on to gear rates, starting off with gear rate one, and in this case 21 we're going to talk about something very specific and that is obviously the use of a rage region comp why would you even consider using rage region for gear rate one the answer is pretty simple pretty straightforward it is mainly mainly besides obviously doing more damage in ultimate mainly because of the sawbond arcana set and the synergy between a sawbond arcana set and a prolonged fight with what gear rate one is it's just massive and you're going to be able to cast your ultimate five times, getting the full 50% damage increase. Mm, and Hollows in is a very key part of that and combines especially well with if you have an Elowin, because what the Elowin does is obviously give, uh, give rage globally. So if we go into the fight over here, they actually click on start, I wanted to click on auto fight. But if we click on the map over here, let's say you have your Elowin uh, right here, she's going to restore rage for everyone and then if you have your hollow on the other side be it if you start building your DPS on left or right, it doesn't really matter you can get the full benefit of two rage region units boosting your main DPS for example if he's placed in this spot over here so there's, there's obviously a couple different combinations but the best when it comes to healers for gear rate one is rage region healers because of the obviously uh, talked about benefit in regards to Sorbonne Arcana set. And now we're going to talk about a very specific, a very specific, not position, but a very specific timing of needing to use uh, Hollow's ultimate. And for that one, we're just going to let this, uh, this whole auto fight here go for the moment. And then I will uh, point out when it actually gets to that it should be rather quick even though this fight does take quite a while and yeah i think i can already talk about it so one of there's there's pretty much three factors that make out gear it one number one you need the damage number two you need the crowd control slash delay and factor number three you need appropriate healing there's nothing more annoying than getting far enough into the fight and all your units actually dying which then obviously stops you from beating the fight and that is that is also why we're going to slow down here we're going to remove laurel for the last time and now it's very very interesting if you if you just focus on cycling rage you're going to end up with a problem and that problem is going to be in most cases your hollow is not going to be ready when you need her to be and that is exactly if you take a, uh, take a look at those mobs over here, you take a peek at those mobs over here, they'll obviously damage our Dolores and our Kamet. And what we need to do is we want to wait until they cross this tile right here. Once they cross this tile, that is our sign to activate Hollow. Because we need her to use the 20 seconds to not only heal Dolores, but also heal Kamet or one of the two is actually going to die. So if you've wondered why all your units apparently always die at the end, that is because the timing of your hollow ultimate is off in uh, comparison to what you actually want her to be. So yeah, as you can see, everyone is still alive, the enemies moved past and you can then continue beating the stage, but I don't think we need to stay in this stage any longer. All right, now onto gear A2. So there's two use cases really number one would be the 19 plus use case of sadie and the hollow mainly just to increase sadie's rage region so she's able to uh ult more often and at the end of the day that is just honestly it is the worst approach you could take to gear a2 because using sadie is just not only annoying but it takes a lot of very specific units as well as rather decent gear, good timing, and actually trying to use the Sadie approach to beat 19, 20, and 21 is more of a pain than just doing it the Volker way. So it is possible to use Hollow past 19, but I would recommend just using the standard Volker way and 
using Vortex as your healer for that one. Now, up to 18, it's a bit different. And that is because for 18, there's not, uh, or up to 18, there's not that shout that actually kills all your units, but you just need to use ultimate sufficiently to keep all your units alive. And for that one, Hollow is one of the more prevalent choices. And your goal is pretty simple there. You just place Hollow on the field, allow it to cover everyone, allow it to recover rage. For example, for Brocky, that gives damage reduction. For Sadie, that gives damage reduction. Or for Vortex, that gives shields. For Gwendolyn, that gives shields. For Regulus, that reduces incoming damage to heroes around him. There's a lot of ways that a Hollow can be useful. And she is definitely a useful unit when it comes to progression from gear rate 10 to gear rate 18. But that is about as far as her usage for gear rate 2. Alright, now moving on to gear rate 3. Honestly, for gear rate 3, it's not, not really about your healers. But if it actually comes down to using healers, then Hollow, Leia or even Elowin are probably your most prevalent choices. Or technically even an Autumn. But what they do is just regenerate your rage and then allow your main units, be it a Sealer, Setrum, whoever you're using to obviously uh, get into the ultimate sooner, do more damage against the boss. And then specifically help with keeping up the rage battery that is Idre, so allowing your Idre to just attack more often. And there's, there's, just, there's just a minor trick, I guess. And that is the fact that um, because uh, because of because of Hollow specific range, she has a slight advantage when it comes to being compared to uh, being compared to Leia and Elowin. And that is simply the fact that if you just place your units normally, and then the fight continues and the fight goes on and everything just goes the way it goes, you. You might want to, depending on your tactic, because there's a lot of different approaches, you might want to place a unit right over here to face to the right side to help dealing with it. And what you're then going to realize is that if we just get, give ourselves some more cost by selling those units, is that your traditional Elowin and Leia aren't actually going to be able to reach and the ho Hollow can't only can heal over here as well as even here, this tile over here. So for example, you use a Oleg or a tank Volker to tank some hits. So it's pretty much just a benefit of have Hollow having that increased range, which allows you to place down a unit right here without needing to worry about the boss potentially killing that unit before the unit gets to act. And that is about as far as benefits for Gear 3 go. All right, now a quick section about AMR. Hollow is obviously a rather decent choice when it comes to AMR because at the end of the day, your goal is to kill the boss and if you can kill the boss faster, obviously through using ultimates, which is the most powerful state of your units, then uh, it's obviously better. There is, there is a difference in between healing capa uh, capacity between a Vortex and a Hollow, but when, it, when everything is equal and you have enough healing, it is just superior to regenerate more rage, bring out more ultimates, bring out more destruction. So Hollow is definitely a good choice when it comes to AMR. And she might even be the key to some of y'all when we actually do get AMR in 19, 20 and 21, which obviously isn't confirmed as of this moment. All right, for this next uh, segment, it's time to talk about the Mortal Codex. And at least for the codex, uh, for the bosses we have yet, uh, we did yet have on Global, there's only two codexes you could actually consider using her. Number one is going to be the Wasteland Titan. And if we take a look at the Wasteland Titan and then try to find someone that actually utilized her, there's something very particular you're going to realize, and that is there's technically a third bit when it comes to Hollow. And that bit is... Uh, Basically what you're doing is you're trying to push the Hollow's HP as high as possible because as an attack based healer she's very um, susceptible, very in danger by the golem's ground smashes. So what you want to do is push the HP as high as possible so she's not going to get killed by the boss and then try to get as much attack, attack speed and healing effect as possible which then obviously results in you getting a higher score. So if you if we ever see Wasteland Titan again, make sure to remember the fact that you need to beef up your healers, especially your hollows. And now Lord of Sticks. For Lord of Sticks, again, it's rather simple. And because of the Lord of Sticks, also not 
doing a ton of damage. You can also here use the gate boss build that we've showcased a bit before. And yeah, that is pretty much the same thing. You're just going to use a, and obviously in, in combination of any of those teams here. So yeah, gate boss build for hollow. So hollow for a lot of the six is definitely someone you should or could consider using. All right, uh, last but not least, we're going to talk about Void Drift. And when it comes to Void Drift, Hollow is pretty good for any stage of Void Drift, all the way up to Nightmare. And Nightmare is kind of where at least a bit of a problem arises. And that is the fact that you're mainly going to want to rely on healers that heal instead of healers that only partly heal but mainly have some more utility. So you're more, you're more likely going to be relying on a Vortex to keep your units alive than on a Hollow to keep your units alive as well as give them Rage Region. And that's also why Elowin is more superior when it comes to usage for Void Drift because not only does she have the global buff, but she also obviously heals better as well as it has a very strong healing based ultimate and her wood sprite that she can just place down to heal stuff. She's the usable in Void it just might not be the best idea to use it in Nightmare when you really want your units to survive because that's the only real danger in Nightmare that is your units dying in comparison to you not having enough damage really. So yeah that concludes Void Rift. And I think that also concludes this video over here. I hope you've enjoyed this one and if you've watched up to this point feel free to leave a like, sub and uh, there's already the next vote going on for the next ultimate hero guide and obviously I ask you to participate and uh, appreciate it.